Hi, so welcome back. Uh, in this talk, well, in this video, we're gonna keep talking about distributions, um, and we're gonna look at the different things you can come up with using distributions. So the first thing um, is just a quick recall of what a distribution is. Remember, it's just a prob a function from sets to the real numbers where these three holds. We have non-negativity, we have addition, um, and then we have a total one. Uh, and so let's look at um, some theorems, yeah? What can we come up with all these? So first theorem that we have is what's called the complement rule. Uh, so the complement of an event um, is basically, I'll scroll up so you can actually see, uh, the probability of the complement of an event. So in other words, what's the chance that something will not occur? Uh, so let's see if we can determine this without using our knowledge, right? So this, if you think about, this is just the probability of a complement, right? This is what we're really asking. And what we're going to want to show is we want to see that this is equal to 1 minus p to the a, right? Or p a. Um, and so this is something we would expect, right? Like if I have um, some set a, uh, then I really want the complement to be everything except for a. So 1 minus p a makes sense. So let's prove this. Let's show that this is true. Um, so first we're going to say, um, recall that omega um, is equal to a disjoint union. So here we're saying that they're disjoint to the C, right? So this is a partition, right? So remember, if we have a partition, we can use the addition rule. So by the addition rule, by addition, the probability of omega is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of A complement. Fine, so next we need to figure out, we need to take this P of omega and make it become a one. And that we can just do by making, by the total one. So by total one, we know P of omega is equal to one. And so this whole thing basically gives us exactly what we want. So this implies that one equals p to the p to a plus p a c and rewriting this we get p a complement is equal to one minus p a so here i just took p a and i moved it to the other side and that's it so that is our first theorem congrats you've now proved a theorem in class Woo! party um, okay, next up, difference rule. Why is that text? Anyway, uh, why is there a gap? That's awkward. Uh, that's weird. Oh, well, hopefully it didn't screw up other pages. We'll see. Um, next up, difference rule. So let's do that one next. Uh, okay. So this time we're going to be asking, what's the probability that B will occur and A will not? Um, and so here we're really asking this probability, right? What's the probability of B and not A? So this we saw actually previously. So this um, is the same as B and not A, right? So we can write it this way. But we can also write this another way, right? We can write this as the probability of B removing A. So you can see this, if you recall the the table we had at the very beginning, I think it was the first or second video. This is B, but not A. So B, but not A, and B and not A are basically the same thing. The terminology, they're, they're identical. So if we have B, but not A, what is this equal to? So what we should have, if you think about it, is well, I should have everything in B, right? So I should take things in B, and I should remove everything that's in B and A because I don't need any of those things. So this should be what we have for the difference rule. So let's prove this. Um, I'll come back to that note in a second. Don't worry that I've pushed up. Uh, okay, so just like before, we're gonna partition. So since B is the kind of thing that, so since we have B on the right-hand side by itself, let's start off with trying to partition B. So B can be partitioned into two different portions, right? So I can take everything that's everything in B that's contained in A, and I can take everything that's contained in B but not in A, 
All right, so since this is a par uh, partition by the addition rule, we know that the probability of B is equal to the probability of B intersect A plus the probability of B intersect AC. Um, so this we already talked about. This is already equal to B not A. Um, and this, since uh, for intersection, it doesn't matter what order we put them in. Um, this implies already that P B intersect AC. This is itself in equal to B without A. And then we get P of B minus P of A intersect B, right? So I just moved this to that side. Um, and that's it. So this one was even easier than the one before. We only needed one thing. We just need to know that this partition exists. Uh, so this little note that I have up here um, is that basically the book assumes here that A is contained in B. So if A is contained in B, what we end up having is um, P of B without A is equal to P of B minus P of A, right? So since A is already contained in B, A intersect B is already, it's just going to be some subset of A, right? So it's just going to be A. Um, and so this is where they do it. The problem is that they then use this rule to imply things that are actually not true. Um, and I don't see why they don't just give the general definition when the general one were, is equally as easy and gives you more information. Anyway, so don't follow the book in this one. The book is wrong. Uh, it's not wrong, but it's not giving full information. Um, and because of that, it will be long, wrong later on. With the this difference rule, you will be good. So don't worry. Use this one. Um, inclusion, exclusion. So this is the last uh, thing we'll talk about in this video. Uh, inclusion, exclusion. Uh, and basically what we have is we're going to let A and B two, be two subsets of omega. Uh, and what we're going to want to show is what is the uh, union of them. Um, so you might think right off the bat that, oh, it should just be P of A plus P of B. And this is what most people think right off the bat. Uh, but the problem is there's actually a third character here. And this needs to be that we need to look at things that are contained in both. Um, so let's actually look at this. Um, and we're going to do this all down here. Um, and then I'll come back um, and verify that what we did before was OK. So the way we're going to kind of do this is we're going to look at um, our sets as a Venn diagram. So I'm going to look at this. We're going to look at this. Here's A. Here's B. So we're going to break it up into these three little portions. Um, and this will kind of help us look at partitions, right? So if I look at it, the partition A union B, right? So I'm trying to figure out what A union B is, right? That's my main MO. So if I'm trying to partition A union B, well, what I get is three these three different parts, right? So I have this first part looks like it's A without, uh, this is A, yeah, A intersect B complement, right? So I'm looking at everything in A, and I look at everything outside of B, and that'll give me um, what I want. Um, or you can think of this as, actually, I like this terminology a little better. So A without B, right? So this is equal to A intersect B complement. Um, so we have this. Union, we need to add things. We're going to do the green part. The green part's easy. This is just A intersect B. Uh, and then finally, this last part um, is also kind of easy. It's B without A, which we said is also equal to B intersect A complement. And you can prove that these are equal if you're not confident in me. That's okay. You shouldn't always be confident in me. I make mistakes. So double check my work. Double check everything. Um, so yeah. So we have this. Um, and then now what we're going to do is... Actually, we already know all these things, right? Yeah, we already have everything. Yeah. Okay. So this is it. So what we're going to do here... Um, so we have this partition. We have this partition, right? Because it's a partition. 
So what we do is we take the probability of everything, right? So by addition. So this one is really hard in the sense that we the finding the partition is really difficult. It's a, it's not it's not an easy thing to find. Uh, this is B without A. Uh, and then from here, you might be like, well, we're kind of stuck, right? Uh, but the thing is, we can actually keep going by the difference rule. Um, and here, this is where the book starts having problems because they didn't do the difference rule properly. They actually have to make things a lot more complicated for themselves for this. But here, we already know exactly what the difference rule is, right? So for us, this is just, so P A without B, well, this is just P of A, right? P of A minus P A intersect B. Then we bring down the P A intersect B. And then this last one is P of B minus P A intersect B, right? I should do these in colors. So this is blue, this is all blue, this is the green part, this is the green part, and then this last part is the red part, this is all the red part. Um, and then if you notice these two here, they cancel, right? They're the same thing. So they cancel, and we're left with P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersect B. And that's it. Uh, we're done. Nice and simple. Uh, and you can kind of see that's exactly what we have, right? P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersect B. Um, yeah, so we'll end this video here. Next time we will talk about, because um, I want to do, yeah. Next time we will look at um, some examples. So yeah, I'll see you then.